Given your understanding of transformations up to this point, I think most of you can visualize and understand the effect of transformations on sine and cosine graphs specifically. What's more difficult, however, is when you have to draw transformed sine and cosine graphs on paper. So let's attempt to do this. I have here a transformed cosine graph. And so my strategy with graphing these on paper is to start with a regular cosine graph, which I know starts at 1 and has a period of 2 pi, oscillates between negative 1 and 1. And I'm going to graph one transformation at a time. So let's bring this over to the grid. My y value of 1 going down to my y value of negative 1 and each of my major points mapped out here here's 2 pi on the x-axis and I'm supposed to go for two cycles so let's go another half cycle there let's do another half cycle on the other side okay that will re um, give me the requirements for two cycles I'm not going to put arrows on the end, even though the graph does go on, I'm asked to do two cycles. So let's just stop at two cycles, do what the question says. I have my axes scaled, everything's looking good so far. Now the first thing I like to do on paper is to take care of the period. So I'm going to next graph y equals cosine 4x. x was replaced by 4x, so I know that that is a horizontal stretch of the graph by a factor of one quarter. In other words, my period is a quarter of what it was before. So my period is pi over two. So just back on my animation for a moment, I have a regular cosine graph and I'm making B4 and I can see that my period is now pi over 2 right here. The graph is oscillating faster. Now this can get very confusing to graph on paper. So what I like to do is, it's kind of like a little cheating thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my scale because I want this, the end of one cycle to be pi over 2, I'm simply going to make this value pi over 2 and I've scaled my graph. I've kind of lost the visual meaning of the fact that it's going up and down faster, it's been squished but it achieves my purposes of graphing on paper. Okay, um, The next parameter I'm going to look at is phase shift. X has not been replaced by X plus or minus something, so there's no shifting of the graph left or right, which is good news. Now I'm going to go to amplitude. Amplitude, remember, is the absolute value of the A value. So the amplitude would be 2, and the 2, remember, is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 and the fact that it's negative also means we have a reflection of our graph across the x-axis. So for the next step in the process I'm going to take this and I'm going to now graph negative 2 cosine of 4x. I'm going to do two transformations to my graph in blue. I'm going to reflect it across the x-axis and multiply all the y values by 2. And so the result of that will be, as you're seeing here, flip it over, multiply by 2. x-intercepts to stay x-intercepts, flip it over the x-axis and multiply by 2. And so my graph now is looking like this. And now I have one last thing to graph, which is the 1, which is my vertical displacement, which means I need to shift the entire graph up one unit. So I'm now graph taking the previous step and adding 1. When you're graphing this way, color coding is a good idea. So I'm going to shift all the y values up by 1. Now just keep in mind that one unit is two, uh, two uh, units here. 
so up one unit is like so And to finish it off, I was asked for the range. My green graph is my final graph. It ranges from negative one up to three. So the range is y is between negative one and three. I can check my amplitude with that. High y minus low y is four divided by two is an amplitude of two. Okay, let's just check our work with our animation. Uh, our A value is negative 2. Our B value was 4. C was 0 and D was 1. And is the graph we got looking like this? Well, <laughs> it doesn't, but that's just because we are zoomed out a lot further. Remember, pi over 2 here is, is like so. So my graph really only goes to... Um, maybe pi at most. So let's just take our animation and and now that's looking a whole lot more like what we have on paper. So in our next example we have X being affected by uh, two different things so we need to separate that as we know from our previous study of transformations it's best to do that to make graphing a little bit easier. Factor out the two which would be x minus pi over 8 minus 1. And so the amplitude is affected by the vertical stretch. Absolute value of 3 is 3. The period is affected by the horizontal stretch. It's going to be half of the normal period, 2 pi, to become the new period, pi. The phase shift is the value of c which is pi over 8, which will be to the right, and our vertical displacement will be negative 1, which will, will be down. And so, as I indicated in the last video, we're going to start by graphing a regular sine graph. Sine starts at 0, goes up to 1, comes down, there's one cycle, there's half a cycle on that side, another half cycle on this side. And my period ended right there, so that's 2 pi. Now the first thing I take care of, remember, was, I said, was the period chain. I can see that the period is pi, so the graph is actually going to end its cycle right like that, but because that's going to get hard to graph, what I'm going to do is simply change the scale on the graph and say, okay, I know it's been compressed, but to make this easier to graph on paper, there's the end of the period, pi, and therefore I have graphed y equals sine 2x because that's got a period of pi. Okay, so that's done. Now that we've got the period out of the way, let's move on to our a value. Take the previous function and multiply by 3, which will multiply all the y values by 3, which will affect the minimums and maximums, but not the x-intercepts. And so my graph is now like so. So I have this translations left, and I'm going to do the horizontal translation first. The replacing of x with x minus pi over 8, remember, is sliding the graph pi over 8 to the right. So I need to figure out how much pi over 8 is in terms of, I have my marking of pi right here, and this is 0. I have to figure out how much pi over 8 is. Well, halfway would be pi over 2. Halfway there would be pi over 4, and halfway there would be pi over 8. And it turns out that each marking on my horizontal axis represents pi over 8 units.
Things don't always work out quite quite that nice, but in this case they do. So I need to take all my points in red and move them one marking to the right to achieve my phase shift. And finally, I will deal with the minus one at the end, which is a vertical displacement one unit down. I need to take all the points in green and move them one unit down. So there's two complete cycles of my graph and my range. I can see that the graph is ranging between, that's right at negative 4 there by the way, it's ranging between negative 4 and 2. So y is between negative 4 and 2. So just to graph this function on the calculator, let me set my window dimensions to be similar to what I've used on paper here. Uh, remember each of these units was negative, it was pi over 8. So if we go back three or four units, we could graph from negative 4 pi over 8, which is negative pi over 2, up to, here's pi, which is 8 pi over 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pi over 8, and our x scale, each of our markings was pi over 8, so let's use that. Our y min and our y max, uh, let's go between negative 5 and 5. Let's not forget to type in the function. 3 sine 2x minus pi over 8. Minus pi over 4, sorry. Because I'm typing the original in without the factored form. It should work out the same. Minus 1. And let's be sure we're in radian mode, which we are. So we're good to graph and we're checking that this graph looks similar to the graph I have in black. Looking good, so I must be correct.